This is a message from the Seraphim about humanity and duality. It has always been possible for humanity to transcend duality. However, the present human body has many flaws, and this makes humanity's spiritual evolution a difficult task. But now humanity is at the verge of a new era in which illusory time is speeding up, and consequently, progress towards real freedom is here and now. Reality is gradually apprehended by the empty mind and not by the thinking process, and cleansing the window of perception is all humans must do to break free from the slavery of the illusion of separation. We emphasize and encourage you to leave desires behind and to become one with expansion. The self-image you are misidentified with, which walks proud with its assumed identity and tries to modify whatever it encounters, maneuvering all situations to its own benefit, unscrupulously adjusting to each situation to survive, never relaxed and tranquil, will slowly crumble. Memory that gives the feeling of I, an I that has an invisible ground of inexistent thought matter. This I, wants to survive and is ready to fight to be part of the deceptive illusion. This I, will also crumble as listen to this message. The feeling of being disconnected is associated with humanity's amplified aptitude to imagine conceptualized intangible conditions and stipulations that create separation in the midst of unity. Do not be a victim of your fears and wishes. Surrender to what is, and stop trying to control your field of action. Do not try to alter your world, give up the resistance, make no demands, yield, relax and listen. You are the space in which your body, together with these feelings you feel, these sounds you hear, these thoughts you think, and these emotions you experience, rests upon. Everything you see, feel, smell, taste and hear, is part of an imagined dream. Even though whatever is right in front of you may appear to be completely real, it does not exist. It's all simply a fragment of the collective imagination of expansive awareness. You are part of this awareness, you are this consciousness. This is your dream, and there is nothing that exists without this magnanimous imagination. Thus said, even the whole universe is false, seen from a higher dimension's perspective. A great part of the energy of this universe corresponds to material representations that are constituted by particles with no apparent mass thought particles, in reality. There are numerous personalities in every human, and therefore numerous wills within his enclosed individual consciousness. These personalities are in a constant struggle against themselves, which is exactly why you cannot advance. Intellectually, you do not have any independent autonomy from the whole. However, when you awaken your causal body, you will become the master of your will. The astral body, which acts as an intermediate between the encasement of the intelligent soul or the causal body, and the physical body, will be refurbished. This subtle encasement composed of vortices of deep transcendental energy and thousands of hollow meridians of delicate fabric, is used for the spiritual projection of the soul into a universe of ecstatic feelings. Even though most of the emotions are kept in the physical body, the astral body also transmits, at times, emotions that have stayed in the vortices resulting from cleansing the physical body of emotional turmoil. In the dimension that humans inhabit, there are no physical laws, only mental laws. Atomic and molecular combinations hold within them the mystery of the void, the mystery they dreamed. These particles don't really exist, what lies behind these mysteries is mental, astral, and causal and other types of more purified information not understood by the human brain. In the individual's dream, mental laws prevail. One may experience gravity, walls, or other objects, but these are no more than mental constructions. In reality, we remain as if sleeping in bed, dreaming, and what we experience is nothing more than spontaneous imagination, a trance-like state. If you look for molecules, atoms, and so forth in your individualized dream, you will definitely find them. That does not mean they are real and that now you have proof, 
your evidence will last as long as your dream lasts. We are not trying to make you understand three-dimensional dream collective chemistry or physics. These are merely employed to manipulate conceptualized energies that are the root of all existence and form a medium for the manifestation of the human body amidst countless other visions and forms. We will rearrange, clean and refine this thinking energy so that the human being may understand that his slash her life is a dream and nothing more than that. Let's restate the undeniable truth that this three-dimensional reality is in fact a holographic dream. Not only what surrounds you is being dreamt at this time, but also, you all are part of this exact same dream. You are a being within a dream and simultaneously, you are also the dreamer. You are in truth the heart of pure awareness, unadulterated and silent. You don't need this message to evolve, you don't need us either, we, the seraphim, also are just dreamed beings that fly to and fro within this complex mirage. You are already pure consciousness. However, if you feel in any way confused and you are a faithful believer in the world that surrounds you, then keep on listen openly and we will show you how, what you call reality is nothing but a great optical illusion. We will also enlighten you about the beings of the shadow. The beings of the darkest shadow have no realm or living dimension and inhabit the margins between dimensions, their wretched existence is like that of a virus. The brood of the shadows settled there, but invaded the lower dimensions and decoded the molecular structure of the luminiferous ether. So it was that ether became merely a light conducer, ether luminiferous. The third dimension is the most dangerous, since the first and second dimensions are barren and lifeless, but darkness sometimes dwells in the second, and accesses the third through pictures, paintings, and mirrors. The light on the other hand, also has access to these tools, which is used to help humans spiritually. There are a significant amount of inhabited planets in this galaxy that are relatively close to Earth. These planets have ultraphotonic light beings as well as natural and unnatural atomic molecular material beings. Planets around Polaris, are inhabited by astral entities of reflected light. They are like the moon, they do not own their own light. These beings, though invisible, have the power to holographically materialize within the third dimension, where they take on angelic forms that mesmerize the human eye. They are responsible for balancing terrestrial electrodynamics and magnetic frequencies. On some occasions, they have guided the human race through evolutionary processes, but things have changed in the present. Although many of them were biblical, Vedic, Mayan, or Aztec beings, amongst others, they are not highly evolved beings. In the midst of their great authority, many were flooded by darkness. They commanded humanity to call them gods, and ruled and dominated men. They became accustomed to being worshipped. To keep humanity subdued, they instilled fear and anger in their hearts. In this way, they have been enslaving humankind from time immemorial. Many humans escaped the subterranean darkness implanted on earth and hid, but the slavery imposed by the shadow is like an appalling disease that spreads slowly to every corner and strangles the heart of even the saintliest. These beings appear to have light, nevertheless, they can be recognized by their anger and preference for skin color and sex. They are responsible for implanting the programs of racism and sexism in the collective human mind. They may offer help in critical moments and sometimes it seems like they fight darkness, but their help is useless because they can only access the three-dimensional astral plane. They can only combat entities in the lower dimensions and, with the use of the nebula's power, they combat darkness with darkness and this only creates more of it. If you were to encounter one of them, realize that their help is merely astral and material and there will always be a price to pay. These beings are not interested in guiding humanity's spirituality or in training them to defend themselves. Their purpose is simple and selfish and their transmitted energy is low, when they broadcast this energy to humans it remains in the muscles causing some kind of pleasant sensations. Do not be fooled by it and become addicted. 
This energy does not penetrate the nervous system or the subtle meridians and it won't support any lasting embryonic effect. The seraphim have tried to help these beings, but they often have rejected these offerings because they lack humility. There were, in the holographic past, archangels that sometimes showed them their atomic fire, made them tremble. Archangels guided these egocentric beings through areas of space filled with fulminating blue light to help them evolve, but not so many succeeded. Be careful, as these luminiferous beings are the most likely to fall into the grey nebula. Even though not all of them are malevolent, they may confuse and stall your progress. At the time of death, they have the ability to embed the egoi personality to the soul and guide it along three-dimensional astral paths that are fascinating at first, but utterly dull at the end, and you will also become their servant. Reject them, or else your spiritual growth could experience a lag within a sub-universal limbo. The most powerful corporeal beings seen in the third dimension by prophets, seers, yogis, etc., are fifth-dimensional beings that inhabit the parallel three-dimensional aerials of Sirius, Arcturus, and the Pleiades. Arcturus, being the constellation inhabited by the most advanced beings, has helped Earth on many occasions and continues to do so. These star beings have such powerful light that they infuse the planets that revolve around them with eternal jubilee. Some of the planets within the Arcturian constellation are inhabited by three-dimensional beings who have mental and spiritual access to the fifth, sixth, and seventh dimensions. These are incredibly advanced corporeal beings. Their technology and understanding of three-dimensional physics is unlimited. In Alpha Draconis, the existence of entities embraced by hatred, greed, anger, and other ramifications of fear may be observed. They are creatures of war and domination, their instinct is to attack, dominate, devour, and destroy. They serve their false sense of individuality. There is another group which sprung from the binary star system called Zeta Reticuli that are homeless. They are interested in human DNA and the human soul. They have no souls of their own and with their advanced technology they are trying to encapsulate the human soul with the purpose of becoming immortal. In other words, they try to dispose of the soul's essence living on the ethereal capsule, a clear, indestructible silhouette in which they are trying to upload their computerized conceptual mentality. What we propose here may sound far-fetched, and maybe it is. Nevertheless, it will remain real to those who believe in this dream. If you think that your home, your town, your planet etc. are real, then what is proposed in this message is just as real. On the other hand, if you realize that the apparent reality that surrounds you is a dream, consequently what we propose here is a dream as well. In order to understand the shadow, it was necessary for the source to create a being that had the luminosity of the source and the confusion of the nebula simultaneously within itself, as all other existing beings could not hold the two ends within the same soul they could only choose one end, light or darkness. If a light being changes its frequency to the nebula's frequency, it is impossible for the source or any other being of light to penetrate such dense gloom with loving brightness. Any being that chooses darkness remains unapproachable and it is almost impossible to recover. Human beings were created in the image of the dreaming consciousness, with the opposites inside their souls. The Prime Creator is Absolute Consciousness in its natural state. It knows neither good nor bad, inside it, everything happens spontaneously and without effort. On the other hand, the source of Radiant Essence, which is the manifestation of Absolute Consciousness, perceives its own existence and creation from another point of view. It seeks tirelessly to spread light and love above all else, and to eliminate pain from its creation. The source of radiant essence, with help from the seraphim, found the solution and agreed to create the human vehicle with the purpose of understanding the central nucleus that keeps the energies of the shadow alive inside their encasement. Humans call this nucleus the ego. 
moving into the past with the intention of understanding the changes that the shadow brought about, it is important for you to know that previously, DNA contained four material strands, four subtle strands, four causal strands and one central ethereal strand. Humans had a total of 13 DNA strands, the RNA, on the other hand, had two strands in the physical plane, two in the astral plane and two in the causal plane, for a total of six strands. This is the number of humans that is described in the Bible, it is the original number of strands. The reason why the numbers 13, 6, 21 and 7 are mentioned in many scriptures all around the world, is because they point either to the original molecular constitution of humans or to the degradation that followed it. Other extraterrestrial races, along with the sons of the nebula, began sabotaging the perfect human creation and injected nebula components into cell walls. The day that the virulent injection occurred, the children of the nebula deceived and enslaved many beings in the physical and astral realms of eternal consciousness. They targeted first the low-light beings who, due to their ambition and vanity, were tempted with the power of dominating and thus made a pact to keep their brilliance and to become the masters of the humans. This was a terrible day for them since they transformed into luminiferous beings with no light of themselves, now, they are just like the moon, only capable of reflecting light. What they do not understand is that great suffering lies ahead for them. Not because they will be punished by the source of radiant essence, but because the darkness will embrace their minds and hurl them into a whirlwind of oblivion, where they will lose the memory of their eternal self. The spawn of darkness also used the three-dimensional Alpha Draconians to implement changes in the human physical body. The Alpha Draconians are servants of the shadows. Their hearts have been tainted by the darkness for eons. They are slaves that enslave and enjoy causing human suffering and instilling terror. Since they possess psychic powers, physical force and intelligence superior to that of terrestrial creatures, they have a great advantage. Humans have also been modified by another race that comes from a parallel universe, they are from the Zeta Reticulus constellation. They have another agenda and do not spend all their time working with the children of darkness, as they have understood that doing so would mean perpetual slavery. They sometimes affect the human race positively and sometimes negatively. The Zeta Reticulus often need DNA samples to clone themselves and perpetuate their existence, since their own DNA cannot sustain their race. Most of the Zeta Reticulus are potential enemies who are interested in that which encapsulates the human essence, or what you would call the soul. They believe they can empty this ethereal and crystalline capsule, as was explained previously, using electroacoustic and electromagnetic frequencies. These beings want to immortalize themselves and access higher dimensions, but they are like a dream within a dream and therefore cannot transcend the nine dimensions. The human beings, although less intelligent and advanced than when they were created, still have the ability to hold two opposites within themselves without being destroyed. Human beings are composed of the spirit of the source of all light and the ego, which is a reflection of the surrounding darkness. Being a mere reflection of the shadow, although the ego may seem real, it is not truly so. If a human were to understand this paradigm, his or her mind and soul would be liberated instantaneously and his or her essence would remain beyond the duality of good and evil. It is for this reason that human existence was perpetuated and left on earth, so they would transfer their intimate knowledge of the darkness to the source of radiant essence. In this manner, the Source would be able to understand all of the Shadow's secrets, know its most profound aspects, and, when it is least expected, it would illuminate all the gloom with the impetus of the expansive heart of pure consciousness.